Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to add an intro screen to the game. So instead of when you run the game, instead of going directly to the game scene, we are going to have like a small intro before where the player just presses one key to start the game. So this is what it's going to look like. <laughs> it's nothing very special as we can see, so basically we have the logo and we're going to have like this blinking text here so to indicate the player to press any key to start the game and when the player presses the key the game starts so basically at least right now this is the idea eventually i'm thinking about having the high score like i told you before i'm thinking about creating a, a high score table something like this yeah something like this um and probably we are going to have this also at the beginning so i think it's cool when the player goes to the intro screen to have like a the five top players and their scores and when the player ends the game i mean and uh loses the game you can uh, enter his own uh high score with the initials and then we have this table at the beginning i don't know that's my idea we'll see if we get to that but before i start showing you um this new intro scene i want to show you the the whole refactoring that i need to do to solve some of the problems so on the last video I think it was the last one. On the last video, I showed you that I was having a problem with the turtles and the lives. So when I implemented the, the behavior for the lives, to have like the lives on the bottom and decrease the life and all that stuff, the turtles uh, stopped working. And it was really strange because I have no idea what's going on, what was going on. But I think, at least, it seemed to me that it was like a matter of uh, the amount of behaviors that I had in my scene. Uh, so let me show you. I had, in, in the meanwhile, I just deleted some of the events, I'm gonna, uh, some of the behaviors. I'm going to show you why. But it seemed that the, um, the scene couldn't have more than uh, four or five behaviors because I added that behavior, the lives manager, and the turtles stopped working. And the turtles were the last behavior on the list because they are uh, sorted by... Um, alphabetically, they are sorted by the, their name. And the turtles are the last one. So what it seemed like was if I deactivated the behavior that was the life manager, it was in between, the turtles were running. But when I added a new behavior, the turtles stopped running. And I even try, okay, so I'm going to add another behavior, not the life manager. So I'm going to deactivate that and just add an empty behavior to the scene. And the turtles also stopped working. And then I even tried to add a new behavior to be at the bottom of the list with a name to be at the bottom and the, the turtles continue working but the last one didn't work so i'm assuming once again i didn't find any information about this but i'm assuming that uh, the the scene have some like max amount of behaviors that it can run doesn't make much sense i think but at, le at least it seems like that so what i ended up doing was removing a lot of behaviors that i actually didn't need to be for them to be behaviors and refactor things a little bit so you can see that right now i only have three behaviors here so i have the game manager which is the main one and i have the house spawner and the life manager and this one what uh this one no what i did with the other ones was instead of having behaviors which were the turtle spawner and the log spawner instead of having these behaviors i just added those events into the events tab on the scene directly on the scene so these are blocks that i can't reuse i can't like have a behavior and add these to other scenes but that's not a problem because we don't have multiple scenes that are going to need uh, these uh, behaviors so it's not a problem and i ended up creating custom blocks here one for spawning the logs one for spawning the turtles which is exactly the same that we had on the behavior and i even created a new one to spawn the cars because this was one of the refactoring that i wanted to do I, want, I didn't want to have like all those loops on the game manager so i ended up creating a new one for spawning the cars and to be honest i could even maybe join all these three blocks into a single one because the logic is all, almost always the same the only difference is that the turtles have a group count the other ones don't have but if i pass the group count as uh, one so it should work uh, the same and these ones have like specific, the spawn turtles have like some specific um, code about the turtles and that's why I didn't join them. But at least I could join like the cars and the logs into a single block because that would probably work, but I haven't done it um, at this point. 
And so I, uh, I added the events here on the events tab on the scene. So it's not a behavior anymore. It's just custom blocks that the scene have access. And on the game manager, I'm just using those events from the custom. And you can see that I have now I have here events for main. And I have, <laughs> and I have um, three different blocks here the, the were the blocks that I created on the, the events tab. And now I'm just using them throughout the, the game manager. You can see I'm spawning the cars, I'm spawning the turtles, and I'm spawning the logs, and then the player. And now the, the rule that I created, like the, a rule of thumb that maybe I'm going to, to use when I'm using stencil, is that I'm only creating behaviors when those behaviors have like a created or, a, I mean, first of all, I'm going to create behaviors when I need to reuse those behaviors through different actors and stuff like that, or different scenes, of course. But if I don't need to reuse those behaviors on different actors or scenes, probably the other rule that I'm going to create is that, and these are rule of thumb, of course, it's not like a rigid rule, like, it's like a, a pattern to follow. But, but probably what I'm going to do is that I'm only be create. I'm going to only be creating new behaviors if those behaviors need to have like these sort of basic events, like the life cycle events, the um, when creating, when drawing, or when updating. And that's the rule that I'm using right now. So that's why the house spawner is still a specific behavior because it has like an updating. And this is because I don't want to be mixing like updating loops of uh, different logics. Because imagine on the house spawner I have all this code about the houses. And on the live manager, actually on the live, I don't, I don't know if I have a, an updating, but I don't have. Oh, actually, the updating could uh, could stay here. Yeah, that's not a problem. But on the drawing, for example, this is a drawing for the game manager. And on the live manager, I could have another drawing. So if they have like these life cycle events, I'm going to create behaviors. If they don't have life cycle events, probably I'm just going to add the custom blocks and all that functionality to the events tab or something like that or even keep them in the, the main behavior that I have. And probably this game manager should be on the events tab as well, now that I think about it. But right now it's working like this, so I'm going to leave it like this. And um, since I changed all this, the turtles are working, the logs are working, everything is working as expected. I still have the, the same um, bug with the logs and some other bugs, but at least nothing when none of these elements is disappearing from the game so uh, it's better this way and so this was like the main refactoring that i did and one thing that's really cumbersome is that i cannot copy directly like um, a custom block from one behavior to another behavior or from one behavior to the event step i had to create this event at, by hand well, each event by hand with all the parameters and then just copy the code inside and put it here. That was a, a little bit cumbersome, but that's okay. And now let's see about the intro scene. So basically the first thing I did was I created um, like a, a sprite for the logo. So you can see it here. I created this one. I created down Pisco as well. So you can see that I have the different... Um, images here, and then I just combined them in Figma and exported the, the logo, like here. So I just added the logo here, so you can see it exactly on top of the other one, of the screenshot. And so I exported here, and I position it on the, on the screen exactly at the same position that I have here. And so the first thing, I created an actor for the logo. I imported the image, and here I just removed the, not removed, I changed to the do that so it doesn't collide with anything. And on the collision, on the physics, I just said that this uh, actor cannot move because I think that it should be more performant in terms of collision and everything. So this uh, the physics system won't be like uh, worried about this actor. So it probably helps with the in terms of performance. And only has like one animation. I can even like disable the loop because it doesn't need to be looping. And then. I added a new scene. So I have a logo and then I added, I created a new scene. So you can see I did create new and I left everything else as the same. I just I gave it the name intro, changed the color to black and I had a new scene right now. And then when you create a new scene and you want to make this scene like the default one, you need to select the scene. 
you need to select the theme and uh, mark as starting scene. So you can see that you have like this little star and this indicates that it's when you start the game, this is the scene where the game is going to, to start with. And now that I have the scene, I just use the, the tile set to paint the, the blue area here on top. And I added the actor, so I just painted the logo, like I added the actor here, and then I selected and go to the inspector just to position it properly on the on the screen with the like the position that I had here 64 and 96 and I position it here and this is like the the basic layout of the of the intro scene and then the the blinking text I added some code to to have that and on this one I <laughs> I follow not the same rule, but I follow the rule that, okay, I'm not going to create a behavior for this scene. So I can just go to the events tab and just add the code that I want here because it's code very, it's very specific to the intro scene. So it's not a problem. And the first thing that I did was um, showing the text. So basically what I'm doing here is that I'm, and I'll go into this in just a bit. So I'm just setting the current photo retro gaming, which is uh, the right, the white font. And then I'm using the draw text from the drawing category and I'm doing draw text, press any key to start, add, and this. So the, the Y position is a position that I got from the layout. But then um, the X position, you can see that I'm doing some calculation here. And this is basically to center the text on the screen. So what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm getting the, the coordinate of the middle of the screen. So let's say that I have that here. Yeah. So we know that the middle of the screen is at uh, 224 because the width is uh, 448. So the coordinate of the middle of the screen is going to be 224. What I'm doing is that I'm moving or I'm positioning the label at uh, the middle of the screen minus half of the width of the actual label. And so this, what this does is that it um, centers the label on the screen. Because if I move, if I have the label here, it will be something like this. If I move the label half of it, half of its width to the left, it's going to be centered in the middle of the screen. And that's basically what I'm doing here. So 224 minus, and I'm getting the width from for the um, this this text with the current font because I don't know what what is going to be the width of the the label after I write the text. So we need to use this block, and I'm doing uh, two, 224 minus the width of the text divided by two. And that's positioning the label on the x axis. So this is what this was for drawing the text. And now for blinking the text, you can see that I have here this condition that says if show show label, and the show label is an attribute that I created, which is a boolean attribute. And on the created event, I added a, a block of do every 0 0.5 seconds, and this is basically gonna define the speed of the animation. So every half a second, I'm just toggling the variable. So the variable starts at the show label as false. And every uh, half a second, it's going to change the variable to true, and then to false, then to true, and then to false. And on the drawing, I'm only sh uh, showing the text when the variable is true. So what this, do this is doing is that on every frame that is running, the value is going to be either true or false, and the text is going to be uh, appear or not. And, and so it creates the, the period that it's blinking. So this is how I implemented the blinking effect. And then to transition to the other scene, I added a new event, an input event. You have an event for any key, which is exactly what you want. And so when any key is pressed, I just switch to the other scene. And I got this from, yeah, from the scenes. Yeah, from the scenes, game flow, and you see here, switch to scene and crossfade. So I'm just switching to main. So I selected, okay, I want to switch to main. And you have like some some uh, transitions here, then you can give it um, a transition time. Actually, I didn't try this. Let's see. I just put zero because I want the transition to be immediate. Let's see what the crossfade work, uh, how it works. And you even have more um, options here for the transition if you want like a a better transition effect. So. Nin, come on. So you can see here that we have the press any key and I press 
Oh, and does his cross side. Yeah, I don't like this cross side. So, zero second. <laughs> I want it to be like immediate. And so, this is it. This is the intro screen. And like I was telling you, I'm going to try to implement this high score list now. So, when the game ends, because I, I need to see this, because when the game ends, I'm going to need to have a screen where the player can input his initials and then save the score and then save the score into a in a way that it gets uh, the whole list gets um, saved and gets stored between executions of the program so i'll probably get into that in, in the next video we'll see and so this is it thank you guys